Hey everybody, it's uh, Palentine's Day, February 14th. I prefer Palentine's for Mama Chaos Pals as opposed to Valentine's Day. I'm not a big fan of that holiday because I'm grumpy and old and cynical, but you know, that's just me. Hi everybody, I'm glad you're here. Um, let's sh sh like candy. What's that, Sean? Uh, Matt said in chat, I like candy. I do like candy. Yeah, my mom gave me a big box of chocolate, so yeah, I have eaten half of it already. So that was good. Um, sharing, what am I doing? Talking about candy. See, now my brain is like all focused on candy. There we go. That should work, right? Oops. Well, it did. It did for a second. There we go. That's the instant. Okay. Cool. All right, so um, because we, even though we just did Chaos Con last week, we have the next Chaos Con coming up soon-ish, soon-ish. So we are going to do the thing that we do where we chop the meeting in half-ish and take the first 30 minutes for our regular agenda, take the second 20 minutes for the Chaos Con planning. And just a reminder to everybody, um, all of our Chaos meetings are under our Chaos Code of Conduct. So keep that in mind. And also you do not need to have your camera on. We love you if you have it off, it's totally fine. And the third thing is that this is our weekly community call. So the purpose of this meeting is for us to just, um, you know, catch up with each other, talk about community wide um, issues, updates, announcements, that kind of thing. So that's why you're here. If this is not the meeting you were expecting, then you can just go check your email or you can hang out with us too. That's totally fine. Uh, all right, if you've not put your name in the agenda and you'd like to do that, we can make a few more spots for you. Um, please tell us what part of your day you would skip. I chose not, I hate figuring out what to do for dinner, but also, uh, or anything like hygienic, like showering, ah, it's all just a waste of time. I don't even know how to spell hygienic. Because you just gotta do it again, like, <sighs> Again with this shower thing, jeez. Dishwasher also is a pain for sure. And trash, yeah, all of it. Leaving the house too. Just kids, yeah, forget all of it. Let's all just go to the beach, hang out there. We're not doing anything. I'm with you. <laughs> all right, so we brought this up last week and we just wanted to resurface that for this week because we ran out of time. So we've had some folks who are super, super brand new to open source coming into our community. And um, so there's like a level of which like they need to, they feel like they need to catch up with everybody else. So I had been talking to one of our newer members in the community and uh, they thought it would be helpful if we had like a just super simple getting started in open source session. Um, so we started a thread on discourse to just talk about this. We can also talk about it here. Um, the other option, because uh, it's like a little bit out of our wheelhouse, a little bit, um, but maybe just we have some resources and point people who are super new to open source to this like list of resources. Precious O has this great uh, article and then All Things Open is running these, this Open Source 101 virtual events. So, um, you know, given that there are other places we can send people, I, I'm just uh, would love to know what the community thinks about it. So I think I think what I'm hearing you say is there are, we've attract we're attracting people to open source who are exploring not chaos on its own, but actually the whole phenomena of open source and trying to dip their toes in things, right? Yep, that's it. And then, yeah, I think we do need to find some partner organizations and the ones you suggested seem fitting to me. I don't know how to um, help. I think would, would part of our newcomer, I forget what we called it, shepherding role, guiding role, would that be to help people connect in this way? Remember we talked about this, um, I can't remember what it's, uh, it's a group of people who are like cruise directors or something. Tour guides? <laughs> Tour guides, yeah. Yeah. I mean, personally, I'd be hesitant that we take this on in the chaos project as we're focused on community health and like that kind of stuff. This is just my own take. I'm happy to point people to other things, but 
just always kind of worry about the scope and honestly like sometimes your time elizabeth to help people learn about open source just as a starter of my what if maybe we just curated kind of a list of a list of resources and, like and sort of a path for people it's like here we recommend you read read precious o's article and then yeah watch this video from Open Source 101. And maybe we carry kind of some things that are gonna be relevant to the way that we do things in the chaos project. So that they're not just overwhelmed with trying to, you know, consume all of the stuff about open source, just give them some, some pointers. I, that would be a totally fine. Cause that's a kind of a, not one and done, but just a one-time thing and mm -hmm. pointer to the resources. We could try to work to keep it updated but then we could post it in the newcomers channel maybe every now and then, like for those of you new to open source, here's a guide that we put together. Yep, I like that. I feel like that's that's a, a little more sustainable, like you said, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, and also um, then folks can do it at their own pace and on their yeah. own time zone, because that's another challenge we always have is finding a time that works for folks. So I do like that a lot. And also, it might be uh, nice to have uh, that as a way for folks to contribute. Like they may be new to open source, or maybe new to chaos, but maybe if they're not op new to open source, well, hey, you know, help others who are super new to open source in this way. So, um, yeah, I do like the fact that we are attracting this group of folks. Like I feel like, um, you know, we try to be as welcoming as possible, and I, I feel kind of in a way, I kind of feel responsible for their experience. Like if they had a bad experience in chaos, they might not just leave chaos, but they might leave open source altogether. And that would be horrible. Like we would not want that. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm kind of glad that they're, you know, finding us as like a, as a, as a way in a foot in the door kind of thing. Um, Cause uh, you know, I think of maybe some other open source co communities that might not be as accommodating to folks who are super new. So, um, I think that that's, that's cool. So I'm really happy to see them here and I, I want to help them as much as we can. So, yeah. Maybe on that guide then, like a, just a small guide, like towards the end, we can be like, point them again to the newcomer stuff that we were talking about yesterday. You know, how we're kind of getting those two together. <laughs> um, there's the one in the handbook and then the one on, on the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are kind of the same. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. We yeah. had some questions about it yesterday. But. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I think um, it seems like we're landing on this, just having that collection of resources. Yeah. So. Hey, Sean, I think you're still giving some feedback. At least I hear it. I don't know if other people hear it. When you're talking, it goes away. Okay, I'll just mute myself for now. Find that. There it goes. Oh no, it's not you, Sean. I think it's Elizabeth. Is it me? What? Unless I'm hearing things. It's uh, like a low. Yeah, yeah here, here. it sounds like maybe a fan or something. Yeah, my laptop is about to explode. I don't know why it's really hot. <laughs> I don't know. So it feels like it must have, take off. There's Let a, me there's just a my bad. It's fine. Nack pushed an update, and yeah, my machines are whirring this morning and trying to shut down without my consent. Okay, is this better? I moved my mic away from it. Is that better at all? Nope. That's okay. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll I'll do some troubleshooting on that. Y'all are just going to have to bear with it. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Any other final questions or comments on the open source stuff? All good. Okay. Next one is the metrics development group uh, kind of shifting from common. I didn't know if Matt wanted to talk about this or. I can't I put my I put my yay in the wrong place. So anyway, I didn't mean to put it there. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna um, in the metrics in the common working group. So Don, you and I had talked. I'll go ahead and 
take the lead on that just so we're going to switch still all good with that you're nodding so yeah yeah i'm all good with it but um i'm going to be at next week i'm going to be at kubernetes community days amsterdam so i'm not going to be able to do the hospital one again okay. so i agreed to take it over and then i'm going to miss the first two sorry so okay. <laughs> if you don't mind being well, on the hook well, again after we'll that I, that. After that thing's calmed down and i should be good okay for, for a while it's, okay, it's no a problem. temporary anomalies busyness with conferences um and so I, my, one of my thoughts is in the common working group that we have this this time slot available and Elizabeth and I have been kind of chatting about ways to one kind of ensure that our metrics are all getting released consistently um, making sure that our metrics models are being released consistently making sure the metrics models that make a claim against an existing metric like that that's consistent like as Elizabeth was releasing the metrics models which is our next thing on this list there there was quite a bit of inconsistency and it's been sorted out now but I think this is something we should be doing in the chaos work or I'm sorry the common working group is trying to ensure that consistency with the metrics um we had kind of talked about this a long time ago in common is trying to help processes across that are common across the chaos project anyway and so this would also then allow us to kind of centralize this metrics discussion I think that we're talking about so as um metrics models or the to do ospo you know chaos group as they have metrics or metrics models that need to be developed I don't always think that those are the like the best groups to have working sessions on building a new metric, for example, it's kind of in the detail. So I, the hope is, is that we could bring that discussion back to common and common could at least start with a preliminary metrics model or a preliminary metric that could be brought again back to the to do OSPO working group or OSPO plus plus or whomever it might be um, to get to get comments or feedback on. So I, I think this is where I'm kind of envisioning common going. I think that totally makes sense. I mean, that's, it's, it's well aligned with how we kind of, why we created the common working group anyways. It was kind of to handle lots of, lots of miscellaneous things that didn't necessarily, weren't going to necessarily get developed elsewhere. So I think this, this fits well into that. Right on. Mm -hmm. And I'll make sure to, like, I will certainly be at the OSPO, the to-do OSPO working group, so I can, you know, I'll be listening to that conversation. I'll be at the OSPO plus plus one. I think, Elizabeth, if you start, like, the community manager focus group, um, like, I just think there's going to be enough representation in these more focused groups of people. Um, there's going to be representation there, and that representation is the same group that's also in the common working group. That it'll be easy enough to to make ensure that that conversation is carried to the common working group sufficiently. Um. So Ruth, to your question, so we have in, just in the chaos project, we've been kind of rethinking some of our um, working group meetings or kind of how we coordinate work. And the idea is, is to bring together, for example, um, OSPO managers or folks that are members of their respective OSPOs together to ask questions about what are the metrics that they would like to see, what are the models that they would like to see, because it's a, a group of people that is probably trying to answer very similar questions. We can do the same sort of model for um, OSPO++, which is academic and government institutions, which may have a different set of questions than those in, say, for-profit organizations. And we think there would be another group for community managers that may have a, a different group of questions that they're trying to answer as well um, to understand how to grow and sustain the communities that they are managers for. So that's what that discussion is. Oh yeah, I got it now. Thank you, Matt. You bet. Is the is this a, is the um, OSPO plus plus group is that inside chaos or is that the chaos external? No, it would be here. So the okay. OSPO 
Yep. So it's kind of like the to-do group, like certainly external, but like when we're going to have this focused discussion about metrics and metrics models, we'll go ahead and locate that just in chaos. And I'm talking with Claire Dillon as part of OSPO++ to do the same thing, to locate that conversation using chaos resources here within the project. So are the dates or any logistics finalized about the OSPO++ working group? So I'm, I was just chatting with Clara this morning and there's gonna be a shared document that we can start circulating here shortly. Um, and I think yeah. we have, a, so more to come, but yes, we are working okay. on it. Okay. Okay, any other questions about uh, metrics development? Um, centralizing that stuff in common or anything. Yeah, yeah, just one quick question for everybody on the call here. So like OSPOs, we have the to-do group. OSPO++ is kind of an existing organization. Does anybody know, like, is there a community manager organization that we could connect with to say, hey, this is what we'd like to, to propose? Like, is there, is there a group like that? I'm I know not... Jono... Aiken runs that the the that session at all I think things generally, open. Generally, I think not. I lost you, Ruth. Your, yeah, Ruth's your, breaking your up. Is yeah. Breaking up. Sorry, is it better now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I was saying, I think I see mostly community manager groups are like not just open source community managers, like general community manager groups. Ugh, I'm trying to remember their names, but I, I see a lot of them, but I haven't, like, I'm not sure I've seen one that's like focused on open source, like just open source community. Members. But I think some, um, I think where we can find groups like this, maybe during conferences, I know, like conferences have these community rooms and all that stuff, but I don't think I've seen any group that's not open source. Yeah, I want to agree with Ruth. So I've, um, as someone who's been doing this community management thing for a really, really long time, I have seen so many groups try to form like like meta groups of so communities of <laughs> community managers. And I've never seen one succeed. I've seen a bunch of them start. And then what happens is community managers are busy managing their own communities and they don't have time to be part of a community of community managers, As nor is there a lot out. of interest in being, uh, you know, cause we, we all manage different different communities. They're, they're I, I don't know. I've just, I've just never seen it work. The only thing like Ruth said that I've seen work is these events at conferences. So like the, you know, the community tracks at some of the different uh, different events and, you know, some of the events that historically Jono has led. So, you know, stuff like that is is interesting, but um, yeah, it's a hard problem. Interesting. Okay. I would, I would agree I with that. I can also I... confirm. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, it was the only I just, I just wanted to say that I can also confirm that I, that I haven't seen a, at least a, an open source activity around this that, that would have succeeded. But there are the the conference tracks that that are seemingly the best place to at least have this conversation and reach out to people who are active um, in this area. Okay. But I do think it's worth so so I'm not saying that we shouldn't do this for for chaos. I think it's definitely worth doing for chaos because this gives people a purpose. I think that's what's failed with the other like communities of community managers is there's no there's no real purpose behind it. like, a lot of community managers need metrics and don't really know where to start. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's I think it's great that we're that we're putting this together with, with a purpose around metrics. Right on. Yeah. And and we could just have like that resource out there, like maybe um on the websites where people can find it as well. Like you can just have the information out there so maybe there is a community <laughs> that we can and collaborate with but uh, we can just have that resource or that information out there and something else to maybe doing conference 
he says we can also people that are interested to talk about um, this metric for community managers could do a workshop or a talk and share specifics on the metrics we create that are useful to community managers. All right, I, this is great. Thank you. Elizabeth, did you have a comment too? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I think the besides the fact that we are kind of shifting towards these user focused groups, um, we had been chatting with a community manager at one of the other um, Linux Foundation projects. And we were lamenting the fact that there, even though we're all under the Linux Foundation, there's no one that brings us all together, all the community managers of the projects. And so that was kind of like an inkling like, oh, yeah, you know, maybe we should be doing this. So if we don't have another group to do it with, we'll just do it ourselves and see who shows up. I Fair. think it's fine. Well, you know, I like the idea of trying to focus on conference tracks. Like perhaps we could submit some talks to appropriate community tracks at a conference and just try to build momentum that way. I like that in the sense that as as Don was explaining that everybody's so busy that if we create a new group with a new meeting series and, and all that is just it becomes so overwhelming. But if we can find places where people already are um, and just bring up a conversation topic that it would make sense for them to cover, I, I think that will be much easier um, to reach out to a bigger group of people that way. Great. And it, it's interesting you say that, Ildiko, because I think this is how a lot of the stuff with the to-do group in OSPO++ has occurred. That They're like, we need metrics, we need to formalize this stuff, and we're just kind of standing there. And we say, hey, this is what we do, and we can help. We can help publish these things and, and help you think about the software. So, great. Uh, one more quick um, um, thing to mention as event organizers was another idea we have. So we're kind of, um, I've done a little bit of outreach to the folks that have done some DEI badging with us to see if they are interested in joining that group. So um, I was going to talk about that in a minute, but we're almost out of time for this part of the meeting. I'm going to go a little bit over. Is that okay, ChaosCon folks? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I um, just want to let everybody know we did release all of our metrics models on the website. So if you want to see what we have so far, these are okay. them. Uh, yeah, Ruth, you had a question? You know, I well, yeah, I had a question about uh, ChaosCon. Um, is it for um, North America or like, feedback from the last ChaosCon? <laughs> yeah, it'll be to plan the next one which is also on our agenda for, it's going to happen in May. So it's kind of right around the corner. Yeah, because we got someone asked um, from, I think someone from Nomfocus um, that went to attend ChaosCon. Um, we won in North America in the um, OSNA. So I'm just going to talk about ChaosCon. You were breaking up a little bit, Ruth, but it is, at least for me, um, but yeah, the date is set and it should be, on, it's live on the website now as a cursory event or whatever they call it. On the OSSNA website, not on the chaos website yet. You're correct, correct, correct. I was going to try to do that by the end of the week. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to jump back up here. So yeah, all our metrics models are here. If you want to look at them, development responsiveness, you can poke around and see um, what they look like. It shows all the metrics in the model, et cetera, et cetera. Um, any questions on that? Uh, very happy we have our metrics model meeting tonight and Don. I think one of the things that's to finalize the one that you have, the starter one. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I had some questions around the, the feedback. So if you could just take a look at that in the meeting and let yep. me know in the morning. Perfect. Do we want to add a, a so for the for the metrics we we added a a URL redirect so that uh the name of the metric 
uh, if if you just use the name of the metric in the, the URL, it'll redirect to the uh, the correct spot. Uh, I just it... linked to the straight to the user ID in these. Yeah. So the the reason the the URL redirect was there is because the uh, those links are already kind of out in the wild. So any links that exist out there would come in. But the, uh, the I know the I know these links don't exist, but do we want to follow that same convention? Uh, what links? What do you mean the links don't exist? So metrics models haven't those links don't mm -hmm. exist out in the wild because we just now released them, so no one is using the the old style URL link. However, those those old style URL links do work still work for the metrics and will continue to work for the metrics. So just to be safe, do you want me to add the redirect for the models as well, or are we just fine leaving the, the models the way they are? Um, good question. And, I don't know. And it's very, very specific. If you look at the URL there, there's a forward slash KB forward slash. Uh, that's the, the, the URL redirect will accept it with or without that KB. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if we need it. Uh, I don't know if we need it either. I'm just asking for consistency sake. So. I mean, yeah, I guess just in case, but like you said, this, this link doesn't exist anywhere else, but with the KB. So, but yeah, I mean, may as well be. Better be safe than sorry, I guess. Okay, uh, quickly, I'm going to move on. We did have some updates from DEI event badging we wanted everybody to know about. Um, we are um, going to be adding three new metrics, which is around event accessibility, uh, which has been released as a metric already. Event public health and safety, which is in the process of being released and worked on and finalized and event location inclusivity, which is also in the process of being finalized. So those three new metrics will be added to the application. Um, we also are gonna uh, eventually <laughs> add this um, functionality to our bot to require a check of code of conduct for a gold badge. So in other words, if somebody has every other check checked and they did not check the, gold, the code, of conduct, code of conduct check, um, they do not get a gold badge. Like that is a, a baseline requirement. So that is something that we will need to add to the bot because it doesn't have that functionality right now. We are thinking it might be a good project for the SheCode Africa folks. So that's kind of in the works just to let people know about that. And then as we mentioned earlier, we are gonna be starting an, a group for uh, event organizers to better understand the metrics they're caring about and also to um, just get feedback on our process and just make sure we're connected to them a little bit more than we are now because we are not really connected to the group other than just the issues in the application so i want to kind of try to build that community a little bit more and if you are a badger just a reminder there's an issue for you to check um, we just want you to uh, be aware of a few things so go check that and yeah follow those directions any questions on DEI event badging? Okay. Um, as we said, confirmed for May 9th in Vancouver, British Columbia, beautiful area of the world. So uh, if you can make it, awesome. In the We're afternoon. Be... What's that? One... It's in the afternoon. It's the one o'clock, whatever. Five o'clock. One thirty to five. Yeah. yeah. I've got a Dawn suggestion for people arriving that morning. Yeah, that's good. It's um, twenty dollars. Oh, good. But you do have to you do have to register for OSSNA. There, that's there's no exceptions to that.
And I think OSSNA does have some um, diversity access tickets or some scholarships available because that's a really expensive con conference. So um, that is, you might want to look in that if you want to attend, um, check that out. And they're pretty generous with the scholarships, to be honest. I think a lot of people tend to get them. So we should really encourage people to, to apply for those. Definitely. You have nothing to lose to, by applying, right? <laughs> Everything to gain. So no. do that. <laughs> and then one quick final word. Um, we just wanted to try this experiment to try to uh, involve folks who can't make this meeting but want to. Um, we're try gonna try posting a summary of our community meetings on a discourse thread to try to generate a little bit more um, opportunities for people to engage and we'll post the recording there as well. So just want to let people know that. And also, if you're not on Discourse, you should be. We have quite a few folks that are on Slack and not on Discourse. So we would really kind of encourage that as a place for these like long-term kind of uh, conversations where we want to be able to go back and say, what, what happened with this? Or why did we decide that? Or, you know, just have those threads because Slack is not really a great place for that kind of conversation. So, and you can use it just like email. You don't have to check it. You can just subscribe and it will send you emails. You can reply through your emails. So if you're worried about going to another place to check things, you don't have to actually log in. You can just sign up with your email. Thank and you can you do that in your uh, profile uh, preferences, I believe, on Discourse. Yeah, thanks for promoting that, Elizabeth. I, I, um, I myself have not completely shifted or shifted much yet to that context, and I should. Yes, you should, especially being on the board. I know. <laughs> we are no, also trying to move the board. Noted, board yeah. So, yeah, if you're on the board, please go set, uh, sign up for an account so we can shut that board uh, mailing list. I am, yeah, I'm definitely on the board. I just, I would say I'm not using it as much as I should. Yeah. Because we still get so much spam to that board, mm -hmm. chaos board mailing list, like, ugh. Yeah. <coughs> okay, I think we're about done. We have 10 minutes left to talk about chaos cons for those who are, um, for those who are uh, wanting to stick around and help us plan. Otherwise, everybody else can have an awesome day. Um, we appreciate you being here. And yeah, that's about it. We'll see everybody later. I'm going to stop the recording.